I, I got to tell you, because you, you know I'm a huge fan for a long time. Love your books and, and the stand-up and the whole deal. But I so love, I guess, being a father now with two boys of my own, your relationship with your sons. Mm -hmm. And they're funny. They're witty and, and very, cool. they're very, they're very clever on social media and the way you guys sort of uh, jive back and forth. Um, that's uh, very cool to see. They get that from mom or dad. Uh, well, listen, uh, <laughs> I, mom is very funny. She's very funny, um, and so I'll give her all the credit. But I, I think, you know, look, they're they're great, got young men. They're great, but the fact that they're funny. Mm -hmm is is great because I, I i i love funny people yeah. and the 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 funnier they are about me the more i like it it just makes me laugh because you know let's face it i'm a boomer dad you know what i mean so it's like i can't win yeah. okay I can't win. No, no way to win no brother you're winning you're winning uh heavy the the podcast literally i think is top three wherever you can yeah. find podcasts is doing super super well i think one of the reasons it's doing well is because you get people to open up in a way they don't open up anywhere else would you agree yeah well and it's why i wanted to do the podcast was that that i i have have a 40-year career of friendships mm -hmm. Um, and I know really, really, really interesting people in a way that 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 no one no one else is going to know them in the way that I do. So everybody feels safe, and we get into rabbit holes and weird areas of conversation that you're just not going to get really anywhere else. And um, I've had a blast. I'm having so much fun, and I love these episodes. I'm so proud of them. And people seem to dig it, so I'm having a blast. You know, they are digging it, much like your book too. You're telling. Um stories only tell my friends but now we all get to sort of hear i'm uh -huh. sort of like your girl yeah. paltrow sharing that fun story that your son so uh was so quick-witted to come back with a funny response which just sort of perpetuates it all <laughs> so much I fun know. were you shocked when you originally heard it or you thought oh this is great well i knew that my wife and, and gwyneth uh they knew each other even before i knew gwyneth and you know my my wife is is always been a mentor for other women and very supportive of it. So it doesn't surprise me that she would be sort of tutoring Gwyneth on <laughs> life lessons. I, I did not know that the life lessons were uh, in the romantic uh, realm yeah. as well. Right. But that's what I love about my wife. The expression. I love, it. I love that, that she's a, a free spirit like that. And and their friendship, Gwenny and, and, and Cheryl's, uh, it's just been so sweet and wonderful to watch and uh, and to have been a part of. But look, th this is the perfect reason to do the podcast. Yeah. Because, look, let's face it, Gwyneth Paltrow has been interviewed hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we've never had an interview like this from her. Yeah. And that's because I have her on the podcast. Sure. Wait, so here's the thing, though. For, for folks who haven't heard the podcast yet, she sets up this scene of uh, meeting your wife or knowing your wife when she was a makeup artist doing her doing Gwyneth's mother's makeup, right? That's right. She, yes, your the great, wife, the great Blythe Danner, great actor. Your wife at the time was dating Keanu Reeves. Yes, she. That is uh, also true. Uh, She's got the, good taste. Great Matrix <laughs> star, John Wick, baby. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Right. Did you? Okay. So you, of course, knew. You knew that she before you. She was dating Keanu Reeves. Oh yeah. Yeah. You kidding me? I would drive by the house. I'd be like, wait a minute. That's Keanu's car. <laughs> Hang on. I pull over. I be like, knock, 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 knock. Hey, what are you guys doing in there? <laughs> hey. Wait. What's with the the goblets of wine on the bearskin rug? <laughs> hey. Hi. What's going on in there? Hey, but, but my man Rob had, had a nice little run. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> had a nice little run yeah. there right there. So, <laughs> bravo, yeah. bravo, my friend. But you, feel, you, I love hearing these stories. Again, just like your book, these fun stories. I, I was not familiar that you auditioned for the role uh, in Footloose. Footloose. That uh, obviously went to, to Kevin Bacon later on. But was it, how far along in the process did you, were you, were you getting close? Did you test for it, Rob? I, I tested for it. Um, they had a big dance audition. And um, all, so all the people that they were thinking about in Los Angeles had to do a group dance audition to a Styx song called uh, The Best of Times. Not a great song. No, I thought, no, Definitely I know Definitely not song. a great song to dance to. <laughs> then it's beyond and, um, the signature. Not, not a great song to dance. <laughs> no. No, and, and um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I can dance okay. I'm not a great dancer, but I really wanted the part. I knew the movie was gonna be huge. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the big dance number, 
you had to run across the floor, hit your knees and slide to a stop. And I did, as I hit my knees, I exploded my ACL. Oh. Heard it go, pop! And so I was taken out of the soundstage uh, at Paramount for the Footloose Dance Audition on a stretcher. Dang. And uh, not surprisingly, did not get the part. <laughs> but my favorite part, my favorite part about it is, is I'm being dragged off and put into the ambulance. The, um, the producers who really wanted me to do the, the, the big supporters of mine were like, don't worry, it's okay. We're not going to hire an actor anyway. We're, we're, we're going to hire we're going to hire a dancer, not an actor. <laughs> and then two weeks later, the great Kevin Bacon. Right. The part. I'm like. Mm. Thanks. Hey, I like the commitment to the audition, though. <laughs> the commitment with the knee yeah. slide. It's a story you will never forget. The best. And Rob, you actually recently told another story about Chris Farley and steak. Yes. It started a real debate around here. I love the story you recently told about Farley ordering, I think, like two porterhouses and that he puts butter on each bite because the little hat. I was like, come on, that's next level with the butter yeah. on each bite. That is true, huh? That's true. By the way, look look right above me there. That's uh, just so happens to be a picture of me and Farley. Oh wow! Shooting that scene. Oh wow! Um, look at that. Yeah, there so, we are. Um, yeah, no. Farley likes to put an entire cube <laughs> of butter. Oh my god! On every bite of two steaks. Um, and when I when I looked at him, I was like, Ugh, Chris. <laughs> he was like, it needs a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, it, it, it begged the steak question here on the show. How do you like your steak? How do you like to eat it, right? Yeah, how I do you like your hat. steak? So let me ask with you. With hat? Without <laughs> hat? <laughs> Rob, how do you like to eat your steak? Oh, I'm very particular. Very, very, very particular. You and I, both I want have... it Pittsburgh, as they call it, which means, oh, they also sometimes call it Chicago. But Pittsburgh means charred. Yeah. Like blackened, crispy on the outside. That's my wife. She's from Pittsburgh, sort of and that's how she likes it. Tender on the inside. When you so, say so, um, I go um, medium, medium rare, well inside, Pittsburgh on the outside, and I'm a big New York steak guy. Like I don't want fil the fillet. I want like the fat. Yeah. But I, I draw the line on hats. Yeah, no, no hats, no hats. I'm, I'm a medium rare guy, and yeah, I don't really do the hats either, but I'm, well embar done. I, I'm embarrassed for my friend well over here because he likes it like beef well jerky. Done. Well exactly. done. Exactly. Oh. Well done. Can I tell you something? I know people who will not make a steak well done. Yes. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. Same. And As they shouldn't. And, and here's As what, they shouldn't. Here's what I'll tell you. I'm also <laughs> prepared to have the chicken. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if, what you, go, if what you, you come go? to my house and I'm barbecuing and you hit me with that well done stuff, <laughs> you're eating chicken. Come yeah. <laughs> right? That's like, you're, you're gonna have to, you have to ask your guests to leave at that point. I agree listen, with you on that point. Listen, <laughs> it's mine. I got to eat it. <laughs> That's hilarious with the Pittsburgh. But, Rob, we were talking earlier, man. Of course, you, you're just timeless. You look, you're looking better with age, brother. What, what, what does the regimen look like these days, or what are you doing to. Um, how are you keeping off the quarantine 15? Yeah, there you go. Well, it's 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 the perfect segue from from steak. Uh, I, cause I I'm a big um, you know Atkins guy. I, I eat the Atkins way, which is high in protein, right, and low in carbs. Good news is I get to eat my steak, my chicken, my fish, and I've been doing that ever since I became way before I became a spokesman for Atkins. Mm -hmm. um, I was eating that way because it just it, it gives me energy. Everybody knows that's the way to get lean. Um, you still get to have all the fun stuff you like to eat. Um, I do battle sugar, though. I'm, it's mm -hmm. like, dude, it, it is. You have a sweet tooth? It's, I, I have like sweet fangs. Yeah. Not only do I have sweet <laughs> tooth. A sweet jaw like I'm like me. a saber tooth yeah. <laughs> with, when it comes to the, the sugar. Um, so in, in, literally, Atkins made me my own um, ch uh, chocolate shake. Because to to like kill the sugar thing at night, so I I have one of the chocolate shakes, and it's and I'm done. I don't have to go to the ice cream because left to my own devices, at night I'm I'm hammering hammering that ice cream. So <laughs> thank you Atkins for the chocolate shakes. Thank you, my waistline thanks you. Um, the makers of 911 Lone Star thank you. Let's see, uh, this is no time to turn into a character actor.
Wait, <laughs> what's, what's funny is that Mario's trying to ask you about how you stay looking good, but whatever it is y'all both doing it, you look like your cardboard cutouts okay. can be. <laughs> I, I want to ask Mario. Mario, tell me about this Mark Wahlberg, like, 4 a.m. club uh -oh. thing that you're that I see you doing uh -oh. on, on Instagram. Are, are you legitimately waking up at that time? No, I join him on the little later on the later ones. I have I have gone a couple times, but that guy's out of control. But we've been doing this F45 <laughs> trainings. Yes, he tried. No, 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 no. Okay, he goes to bed at seven o'clock. I don't want to go to bed at seven o'clock. <laughs> Why not? You eat dinner Who at goes five. To, I know. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> he hit I me mean, up the other day. He's he said, my I love, I said, bro, Everybody asks I love you, somebody bro. to look up to. I'm looking up to Wahlberg because that guy is Straight jacked. Up. Straight yeah, up. yeah, no, he looks he looks fantastic. We're all about the same age too, man. So I know he knows how to take care okay. of himself. Real quick, I want to make sure we get to it because you brought it up briefly. Yeah. But 911 Load Star, yeah, yeah. congratulations, picked up for another season. Thank you. Do you know? Have they given you any indication of when you may be uh, back on the set? Yeah, we're going back um, first week of September, oh, and uh, I there is a rumor, and I'm so excited about it that we're gonna have a big crossover episode oh. and. Uh, with with 911, so I, I get a chance to work with Angela Bassett and Peter Krause and, and that cast. They're just just fantastic actors. So fans have been wanting it. I think this is the year uh, that we're going to get the big two shows uh, blending together. I'm really That's excited. Be awesome. nice. That's going to be nice. awesome. I mean, Angel anytime to work with Angela Bassett, jump at that, right? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> hey, Rob. Thank you so much for your time, brother. Always good to see you. Yes. Congratulations on Thank everything. You. Hope Every to day. see you in person soon. I know. I know. Love you guys. Thanks, man. And right. definitely check out the podcast, Literally, with Rob Lowe. Uh, it's becoming one of the favorites, I'd say, right?